Ever wondered why narcissism seems so prevalent in today's world? It's a question that many of us might have pondered upon. Narcissism, as defined by psychologists, is a personality disorder characterized by an inflated sense of self-importance, an intense need for admiration, and a lack of empathy for others. Sound familiar? You might have encountered individuals displaying such traits in your daily life, or even on the global stage. But did you know that narcissism isn't just a modern phenomenon? It has been present throughout human history, manifesting in the actions and behaviors of some of the most influential figures. One such figure, renowned for his narcissistic traits, is none other than the infamous English king, Henry VIII. Now you may ask, why delve into the past to study narcissism? Well, it's because history offers us a rich tapestry of human behavior, allowing us to observe and analyze narcissism in a real-life context. It illuminates how narcissistic traits can shape decisions, influence relationships, and impact societies. Historical cases like that of Henry VIII serve as a powerful lens to understand the dynamics of narcissism. Henry VIII, with his grandiose sense of self-importance and lack of empathy, exemplifies the classic narcissist. His reign, marked by tumultuous relationships and impulsive decisions, provides us with a case study that is as fascinating as it is instructive. By studying such historical figures, we can gain a deeper understanding of narcissistic behavior. This knowledge in turn can empower us to recognize such traits in the people we may encounter in our lives today. So why is understanding narcissism important? Because it helps us navigate our relationships more effectively. It enables us to identify potentially harmful traits in others and protect ourselves from their negative impacts. It arms us with the knowledge to foster healthier interpersonal dynamics and promote our own emotional well-being. And so we turn to history for an enlightening case study, Henry VIII. This exploration into the past is not just a journey through history, but a journey towards understanding, empowerment, and resilience. Henry VIII, a historical figure of grand stature, was known for his grandiose sense of self-importance. Let's delve into this statement and understand the implications it had on his behavior and relationships. Henry VIII was not just a king. In his mind, he was the center of the universe, a divine entity with unparalleled authority. This inflated sense of self-importance is a classic trait of megalomania, a form of narcissism characterized by fantasies of unlimited power and importance. Henry's megalomania was not just confined to his rule, it permeated every facet of his life particularly his relationships. He saw himself as the ultimate prize, the apex of desire, and this belief heavily influenced his interactions with women. His marriages were not just unions, but extensions of his ego, tools to assert his dominance and superiority. Take, for instance, his marriage to his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. When she failed to produce a male heir, Henry didn't see it as a biological misfortune, but as a personal affront to his royal status. His ego couldn't accept that he was anything less than perfect, and so he blamed Catherine, leading to the annulment of their marriage. His subsequent marriages followed a similar pattern. Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr all were subjected to the whims and fancies of Henry's ego. Their worth was tied to how well they could cater to his needs, how effectively they could stroke his ego. But what does this teach us about narcissism? It shows us that narcissists view relationships not as equal partnerships, but as power dynamics. They see themselves as superior, and their partners are expected to bolster this sense of superiority. Any perceived slight to their ego can lead to drastic consequences, as seen in Henry's numerous marriages. As we see, egoism played a critical role in Henry VIII's relationship dynamics. Henry VIII's reign was marked not only by his egoism, but also by his impulsivity. This impulsivity was most evident in his relationships, particularly his marriages. Six marriages, to be exact, each one a testament to his impulsive decision-making. Let's take a closer look. Henry's first marriage to Catherine of Aragon lasted for 24 years, the longest of all his unions. But when Catherine failed to produce a male heir, Henry's impatience took over. He didn't just seek a divorce, he established a whole new church to facilitate it. That's quite an impulsive step, wouldn't you say? Next, he married Anne Boleyn, only to behead her three years later on charges of adultery and treason. Then came Jane Seymour, who died after giving birth to Henry's only legitimate son. Then Anne of Cleves, 
whose marriage to Henry was annulled after just six months. Catherine Howard was next, another wife executed on charges of adultery. Finally, Catherine Parr, who outlived Henry. What we see here is a pattern of impulsive decisions, each driven by Henry's immediate desires and whims. These decisions had a profound impact, not just on his relationships, but on the entire course of English history. Now let's draw a parallel to modern-day relationship dynamics. Today we may not have kings who can change religious institutions on a whim, but impulsivity in relationships is not uncommon. It might manifest as rushing into a relationship without fully understanding the other person, making quick decisions without considering their consequences, or abruptly ending relationships when they don't meet immediate expectations. Just like Henry VIII, individuals who display this kind of impulsivity often leave a trail of broken relationships in their wake. They may not be monarchs, but their actions can have a significant impact on the lives of those around them. So, what's the takeaway here? Recognizing impulsivity as a potential sign of narcissism can help us understand and navigate relationships more effectively. It's not about labeling people, but about understanding patterns of behavior that can affect our relationships. Impulsivity, as demonstrated by Henry VIII, often forms a critical part of a narcissist's relationship patterns. The era of Henry VIII was one of immense power and control. This statement is not just a reflection of the political climate of the time, but also a mirror into the personal life of the monarch himself. Henry VIII was not just a king, he was a man who held absolute power. And this power played a significant role in shaping his narcissistic behavior. To understand this, we need to delve into the societal norms of the 16th century. It was a time when monarchs were considered God's representatives on earth, their decisions unquestioned, and their actions often unchecked. This absolute power, coupled with Henry VIII's personal traits, created a potent mix that led to the manifestation of his narcissistic tendencies. Power dynamics, particularly in relationships, were heavily skewed. Women were expected to be subservient, their voices often drowned in the din of patriarchal norms. For Henry VIII, this meant his wives were more possessions than partners, their lives dictated by his whims and fancies. This imbalance of power was a fertile ground for his narcissistic behavior to thrive and grow. But what did this mean for the women caught in this vortex of power and control? For them, it was a life of constant uncertainty and anxiety. Their worth was measured by their ability to bear a male heir, their identities reduced to mere extensions of the king. The emotional and psychological toll on these women was immense, a silent struggle often lost in the annals of history. Yet, it is important to remember that these women were not just victims. They were individuals who navigated this treacherous landscape with courage and resilience, their stories a testament to their strength. They serve as a reminder of the human spirit's ability to endure and adapt even in the face of overwhelming adversity. The socio-political context of Henry VIII's era, therefore, offers us a unique glimpse into the workings of narcissistic behavior within power dynamics. It underscores the critical importance of checks and balances, of respect and equality in relationships. History, in this case, provides us with a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and narcissism. As we delve deeper into the life of Henry VIII, we're reminded of the timeless relevance of these lessons and the enduring strength of those who face such challenges head on. While we look back at historical cases, it's crucial to connect these lessons to our modern context. You see, narcissism isn't bound by time or place. The grandiose sense of self-importance, the impulsivity, and the power dynamics that we've discussed in the context of Henry VIII can all be found in contemporary scenarios. The man who always needs to be the center of attention, who makes rash decisions without considering their impact on others, who uses power and control to manipulate relationships. These are all echoes of the narcissistic traits we've explored. But recognizing these traits is just the first step. What's more important is understanding how to navigate them. This is where our historical analysis becomes truly empowering. It provides us with the tools to identify these behaviors, to understand their origins, and ultimately, to protect ourselves from their harmful effects. Knowledge is power, and it's time to use history as our guide. Narcissistic behavior leaves a profound impact on women's emotional and mental well-being. 
this isn't just a modern phenomenon. Let's turn the pages of history back to the times of Henry VIII. His narcissistic traits led to emotional turmoil for his wives, casting long, dark shadows over their lives. The consequences of such behavior extend far beyond immediate relationships. The ripple effect of narcissism can seep into every aspect of a woman's life, affecting her self-esteem, her ability to trust, and her overall mental health. Historical cases like that of Henry VIII serve as cautionary tales, reminding us of the damage that unchecked narcissism can inflict. But they also empower us. They show us that recognizing these traits and understanding their potential impact is the first step towards safeguarding our emotional and mental well-being. And so, we conclude our journey, having unraveled the narcissistic traits of Henry VIII and their relevance today.